let's get on to uh, your uh, Hall of Fame induction. You're going to receive the honor in 2010. Uh, what can you tell us about that moment when your phone rings and you get the news that you're going into the Hall of Fame? Well, it just, it was one of those minutes where I, you know, after, after I hung up and uh, I just kind of smiled and, and it made me pause and remember, you know, uh, not only the body of work that I did in the WWF or E, uh, but just my whole life. And uh, what's funny is after the Hall of, after the WWE Hall of Fame in, introduction, you know, there's just a pro wrestling Hall of Fame. It's not as big, obviously. It's not as, you know, it's not, it doesn't get the coverage that, you know, WWE Hall of Fame gets, but nonetheless, it exists. And I also got inducted in that Hall of Fame. Yes. So that was, that was pretty good. Um, but yeah, to, to be, uh, you know, to be recognized by your peers is, is great, you know, so. Ted, your Hall of Fame ceremony is going to be in in Phoenix, Arizona. And after growing up in Wilcox, Arizona, this had to feel like a real full circle moment for you, didn't it? It, it really did. And, and I, I don't know, you know, I, I never bothered to ask anybody why they protect, uh, why they chose that particular WrestleMania to do this. But I mean, uh, some of my family members, you know, like my my cousins, and, and uh, of course that's that's been a while back now. Some of my uh, aunts and uncles were still alive, and and my you know and my uh, my older brother who lives in Tucson, uh, uh, they made the, they made the trip up, and so yeah, it was it, it was pretty heartwarming that that it was that I that it was there in Arizona. Yeah, it was special. Made it special. So some of your family is going to get to be there. And most importantly, your sons are going to be the ones who induct you into yeah. the Hall of Fame. Ted Jr. and Brett. Man, I mean, having your sons share that stage with you, it's got to be the most incredible feeling in the world. It was. It was. It really was. Uh, and of course, cool. at, that, at that time, you know, both of them had uh, had visions of, you know, uh, getting in the business. And, of course, being, being a wrestler is not what I wanted for my boys. Not because I don't love it. Um, it was it was more about the lifestyle that goes along with the job, but I will ha even have to say now a lot of the things that I didn't like back then are now no longer true, and I mean it's kind of like uh, they're they're not working three three straight weeks uh, without a day off anymore. They're they're doing I think they do. Uh, 10 days on and three days off. Then they do four days on and three days off. I don't know if they still do that. You know, it could be that they just wrestle weekends. Pretty good. I, don't, I, I honestly don't know. Pretty good gig nowadays. And you can see why these guys are wrestling into, you know, their late forties or even their early fifties, because it's, they are taking a quarter of the bumps that you guys were taking along the way. <laughs> oh gosh. Maybe not even that much incredible and look ted uh you know we couldn't let this episode go by without at least one clip here's something that really stood out to me from your speech that i watched it's a moment when you offer some advice to the young stars of wwe a lot of other guys sitting right here that uh, went down that road with me arn anderson ricky steamboat steve kern guys i'm thankful to all of you and to you, the new, young superstars in the WWE, let me share this with you. Some words that my father shared with me and that I've passed on to my boys. My dad told me this. He said, son, if you're willing to work hard, persevere, and pay the price, you can be anything you want to be in life. And don't ever go after anything that you are not passionate about. And you cannot make it in the WWE without being passionate about what you're doing. So I say to you, the new stars of the WWE, 
Be passionate about what you do. Persevere, work hard, and live your life with integrity. It's not always the greatest talented person that gets the job. It's the guy that's the most dependable and that has the biggest heart. Dad, I thought that that was really well put, really well done. And I mean, timeless advice for you to offer to some of these young guys in wrestling, right? Yeah, well, and you know, it's, I just passed down seriously, you know, like it's things that my dad had, and I, you know, and I lost my dad when I was 15. And I remember that and he told me that he told me exactly the same thing that I, I just spoke to all those guys. You know, you can be whatever you be if your heart's in it and, and you're willing to pay the price. So, And you did a lot of hard miles over the years, and it all led you on that path to, I yeah. mean, that stage in that incredible moment in front of that mo that massive audience. Man, it's just what a great moment. Ted, I noticed that you weren't holding a piece of paper. I watched the whole thing. You didn't come out with a piece of paper. That was all coming just directly from you. That was That was, yeah, that was straight from my heart. I mean, you did a 10 minute speech, which is, uh, you know, that's a long time to be up there just standing and talking. And like it was it was an excellent, flawless speech. It's available online. I hope that uh, our listeners will go and seek it out and find it. Uh, Ted, we're almost wrapped up. What what can you tell us about receiving that Hall of Fame ring and that plaque? Uh, and where do you have them now? Uh, well, the, the ring is one that I wear occasionally uh, and it's. Not too far from, you know, I'm actually behind this thing is, is the other part of my bedroom. And, uh, I have, you know, and my, you know, our, our closet is so big that there's actually a, like a, a dresser drawers in, in there and, uh, right up on top in a little box <laughs> is my hall of fame ring. And every now and then I take it out, you know, for special, special occasions. And, uh, you know, that plaque is, you know, on a wall here in the home somewhere, actually in my office. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, you know, those were all the things that I, I you know, I, I prayed for, worked for. Uh, you know, it's kind of like, uh, and my parents before me. The, the the way wrestling was in the 50s and the 60s, yeah, you know, it was very hard life. I mean, moving from, uh, I mean, I went to grade school in like six different places. <laughs> or uh, Amarillo, Oregon, uh, Houston, uh, back to Amarillo, back to Omaha, back to Amarillo. And back to Omaha, <laughs> and then like finished, the finished, I finished high school in Arizona after my father died. It's almost like being a military kid, and then you, yeah. you yourself joined the military, and you're the one who's traveling and yeah. moving and moving around. And yeah. man, uh, like a, a lot of a lot of miles, millions of miles, I would guess, over the course of your life, and uh, just incredible. Yeah, that's what I do. Is I laugh and I tell people that all the time. I said, "Listen, if I've been paid by the mile." <laughs> I'd be the multi-million dollar man. <laughs> <laughs>